Hi, it's Doug from Lesser Aldridge Residential Property Team, and welcome to another episode of Property Particulars Podcast. And my guest today is Shelley Cole. Shelley, welcome. Hi, Doug. How are you today? Yeah, very well, thank you. Good. Nice to be in the city. Yes, yeah, so you had an interesting journey up, but you're here and settled, and you're in the London office today. I am, yes. Yeah, it's always a bit hectic when we travel between offices. Equally, when I'm going down to Bournemouth, it can be a bit... A bit hectic because there's so much that we immediately want to get on with. Absolutely. It can be a bit of an early start, but yeah, nice exactly. when we get here. Yeah, but you've got your team back there working hard. So Absolutely. you can you can have some time and peace to do this podcast with me today. Yes, definitely. Um, so Shelley, how long have you worked at Lesser Aldridge and what is your job title? Tell us a bit about you. Um, so I've worked at Lesser Aldridge for nine years. I actually trained at Lesser Aldridge. So I came and did my two year training. Um, qualified and have been with Lester Aldridge ever since. Um, wow, so, so yeah. you've actually been here, you like saw us lot arrive. Absolutely. Because we came five and a bit years ago, John and I and the rest of the team here in London when we joined. Um, but you obviously weren't there long enough ago that you remember John first time round. I wasn't, no. no. <laughs> I wasn't, but I did um, used to work on the other side with John um, acting for a particular agent and um, often... John and I were on the other side of the matter from each other, so yeah, that was good. Yeah, okay, cool. So yeah, so tell me a bit about the team that you work with, because we're obviously one big team between the two offices, but you're down there in Bournemouth, um, and John obviously travels down to Bournemouth, as does Andrew, probably much more than I do, but who's your immediate team that you work with down there? So I work with Michelle Aversa, and I also have a trainee. My current trainee is Megan, and I have a full-time paralegal in Joel. Um, so we have a good little set up there. So lots of support and yeah. lots of people to share the work with. Yeah, exactly. And we need, like the support is so key sometimes, isn't it? Especially in the kind of transactional work we do, where it can be so different and hectic from day to day. So having a good, sturdy team behind you is so helpful, isn't it? Absolutely. And I think it makes... Um, a much more enjoyable experience for our clients because there's always people that they can contact. There's named individuals. The same people are working on the same files. So if you do pick up the phone and your immediate fee owner's not available, then their support is also going to be available to help answer any questions they might have. Yeah, exactly. I quite often though say that even at the start sometimes because we get that question quite often, don't we? Like, will you be doing the work mm. uh, to either you or me if we, uh, you know, once we've given the quote? And I always at that point then say, well, actually, there'll always be two people as a minimum on the email because I always want you to have another point of contact if I'm not here or in a meeting. Um, so it sounds like you do the same as me. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> um, cool. All right, well, we're going to switch to asking a bit more of a transactional legal question. And so one of the things that I quite often get asked, and I'm sure you do too, but let's find out, is I'll have client, you've done the source of funds with a client, you're starting the transaction, um, and they've obviously told us that they're buying with a mortgage. And then occasionally we'll get the question like, oh, do you help organize the mortgage for us? Yeah. Uh, which we don't. <laughs> <laughs> No, absolutely not. So um, that's normally arranged either by the client directly with the bank or most clients likely instruct a mortgage broker to find their mortgage. Um, it's only once we receive the offer that confirms to us that the bank is prepared to make an offer of a loan to your client. Mm -hmm. And that also confirms to them that they're also instructing us to act for the lender. I think that's something that most clients don't realise is not only are we instructed to act for them in their purchase, but we're also acting on behalf of their mortgage lender yeah. in charging the property. Yeah, exactly. That bit gets missed to think. And actually, sometimes clients are even a little bit surprised. And they're asking, like, oh, why are you acting for our lender? But yeah, that's common with the majority of all the high street lenders that we deal with, isn't it? Yeah, and I mean, the size of our firm and the number of people we have means that we are on the panel for most major lending inst institutions mm -hmm. um, and often those banks will instruct us um, to act for them rather than having to instruct another firm that might have to act for them on a what's called a separate representation basis. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, we receive the mortgage offer and at that point we can review it and report to the client. Um, it's important that when we act for both the lender and the client that there's no risk of any conflict of interest and yeah. um, it's something that we always have to bear in mind. Yeah, exactly. And one of our obligations to the lender obviously we would advise our clients who are buying anyway but we have a specific obligation that we obviously need to advise 
the lender wants us to know that we're advising our client on those points. Yeah, absolutely. And to make sure that the title to the property is good and marketable so that the lender, if ever, was required to sell the property could do so. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes we will get questions straight away like, oh, so you can now you've got the mortgage offer today, we can exchange today. And whilst, of course, we will try and achieve that for yeah. our clients, it's not quick. It's not quite instantaneous. No, I mean, if it's the final piece of the puzzle that we're waiting on, then mm -hmm. we might be able to turn it around quite quickly. But it's important that when we receive our mortgage offer that we check all the details are correct because it is relying on information that's been inputted to the lender correctly. So whether that be our clients' names, the amount mm -hmm. that they're borrowing, the property address, um, if it's leasehold, a lot of the time the lender might have requirements regarding the ground rent, so we need to make sure that the ground rent meets the lender's requirements and just making sure that the offer is exactly what the client was expecting. And we yeah. do that by reporting to them and asking them to sign a mortgage deed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And actually, sometimes if there is tweaks that need to be done to the mortgage offer, such as you've just said there, like a name spelt incorrectly or the address is a little bit wrong, um, those things can be rectified quite quickly and mortgage yeah. lenders work with us as well to kind of get those corrected. But sometimes that means like issuing a new mortgage offer. Yeah. Which is why it's so important that once we have the mortgage offer come in, that we don't move straight away to exchange because it might be that the lender will want to issue a new mortgage offer and you don't want to cause any delay in drawing down those funds. Yeah, exactly. Especially if there's then a close period between exchange of contracts and completion. Um, and actually, that's another good point that quite often I'll get asked, like, well, can we exchange and then complete by the next day? Mm. But again, because we've got that obligation to the mortgage lender, um, we have a set time period. Well, not a set, it varies a little bit between lenders. Absolutely. And I think as um, the residential property world has moved on with technology, a lot of the mortgage offers appear on portals, which allows us to submit our requests for funds electronically. That gives us greater control in knowing when we will receive money. Um, lenders normally have a minimum requirement for what notice they need to draw mm -hmm. down the mortgage money. And that does depend on the lender. A lot of the time, lenders will bring that down if you ask them and you can yeah. request that for your client. But of course, if you're going to give that minimum or less than the minimum notice, you need to make sure you'll get your money in time for completion. Yeah, exactly. And actually, it's such a good point you say about all these the portals that we now have, because mm. um, you're probably far too young. But I remember <laughs> as a trainee, <laughs> we even had to like submit in the po the certificates in the post. Or I'm sure you remember we still had to fax not so long yes. ago for quite a lot of them. Yeah. And when you when when we when we tell our clients that sometimes that we're faxing off to a yeah. lender they're like do you still have a fax yeah, machine absolutely i mean I, we still have at least one major lender i can think of that still takes um the request for mortgage money by fax yeah. and um i know that when my recent paralegal joined me that he didn't actually know what a fax was um, <laughs> so. i absolutely love that yeah that is true that is true um but yeah and then occasionally i suppose and maybe with some higher value properties if it's a private bank that is where you might get separate representation and again that it's fine we can deal with that of course but it just maybe takes a little bit longer absolutely so it's involving another set of lawyers and so of course they'll have their own requirements their own inquiries um, and what we say with clients when they have separately represented lender solicitors is that they allow us time to complete their due diligence before we look to draw down the mortgage money yeah, yeah. And actually, sometimes with the bigger lenders, I can think of a few private banks that I've dealt with recently, and it's the same because they must have a panel system of appointments. So actually, I've got, I've got to know some of those lawyers, and they're a bit more, uh, you know, the set questions they ask, so we can get ready for that and know what expect to see. We can expect, we know what to expect, what comes through in the requests from, from ours. Definitely. And a lot of the inquiries that they're <coughs> asking are inquiries which we would have asked anyway as part of our own due diligence on the property. So yeah. um, it's not anything that's going to come out and be too unusual. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, once the mortgage comes through, we've given our advice to the clients. Then it's that point we can happily suggest, uh, say, to say to our clients that we recommend to move forward, which, of course, is what they want Absolutely. for the exchange yeah. and then the completion. So thank you for that. That's really useful. Uh, let's switch a bit. Let's talk um, a bit now about property the bit that I'm asking all my guests, property particulars, but maybe your own personal property particulars, if you don't mind. So have you, uh, I mean, I know the answer to this already, cause, but have you bought and sold property before? Um, and how did you find being the client and any quirks from your transactions? <laughs> well, of course, I had fantastic representation in this firm, but of yeah. course, unusually for me is that on my sale and my purchase, we actually failed to complete. Um, oh that's goodness. when we got to the completion date and we were unable to actually complete on our sale and our purchase and mm -hmm. that was 
nothing to do with us um, or our side of the transaction, but the property we were purchasing had an occupier. Um, okay. That occupier had not left the property and wasn't prepared to leave the property on the completion date. Oh my goodness. So a very rare set of circumstances and something I yeah. always say to clients, it's very rare the transactions actually fail to complete. But I think now having gone through that and um, the stress that brought, I've got an additional level of sympathy for my clients that come with the stress of moving because it's something we do all the time and it's quite easy to forget yeah. actually the logistics of moving. And if there's a delay, even with receiving money, coming up a chain, it does create pressure because outside of our office, there are people sat in moving vans trying to move home and yeah. the juggle of everything that that comes with. Oh my goodness, um, that's such a, like, that's a proper, like, case study that we maybe, we should quote your, your transaction <laughs> on, on in training sessions now because yeah. um, I had forgotten that that happened to you. Yeah. Uh, but you're over the stress now. You're in you're in your beautiful new house yes, and yes. all happy. Worth um, it in the end. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, and you weren't working on the same day as moving, were you? you no, were I, at had, least... I did have the day off and, and had a lot of support um, from John in the office. Who yeah. was um, fighting our corner to get us completed. Yeah, I suppose it makes us think maybe that another bit, when we do have clients selling that have got occupiers, we need to really drum it into them for for the, you know what we need to advise them to make sure they yeah. can can get their occupier out of the property. But as you say, quite an unusual, but a good insight <laughs> in yes, a absolutely. property transaction. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, thank you for that. All right, to finish up with, we're gonna do a couple of our property particulars quick fire questions, if yeah. you don't mind. So tell me, what do you think is the best thing about your job at Lesser Aldridge? So I think most people that are working in transactional work, it's still the thrill of the exchange. It's still the buzz of getting someone the key to their new home and being able to say to them that the property is yours. Um, I don't think that ever gets tiring. It's always exciting to be able to let someone know that. Yeah. I think we're fortunate down on the South Coast that we can deal with such a wide range of properties, mm -hmm. um, particularly in value. Um, being based on the South Coast, we've just got Sandbanks um, just down the road from us, which is its own little bubble of um, very high value properties. Yeah, sure. Well, that, actually, you've led straight into my, one of my other questions, which is what is the most expensive property or transaction that you've ever been involved with? So I am this week, in fact, actually, I'm due to complete on a purchase of a property in Sandbanks, and that property is worth just over £15 million. Pounds. Wow. OK. Yeah. And then that's quite indicative of the properties in that particular area. Yeah, absolutely. It's something that no doubt will get picked up by the news headlines eventually once yeah. the information comes out. Um, the transaction itself will actually be the most expensive transaction to go through in Sandbanks. So it's been really exciting to be part of that. That's amazing. And actually, I think that puts you... Uh, even across both offices, London and Bournemouth, I think that's the most expensive transaction this year, at least. Amazing. I need to, I'll need to think back to last <laughs> yeah. financial year yeah. as to whether we had any other crazy ones here in London. Mm -hmm. But it's quite nice that actually, even though there's a divide physically between our offices, the transactional values that we do are are, are actually quite similar sometimes. Absolutely, yeah. and it. For that, it creates um, much more varied work. And with the Sandbanks properties, there's additional quirks that we get used to dealing with. Okay. So a lot of these properties back onto water. And with that comes its own unique set of inquiries, making sure that they have the correct licenses and rights to use their private jetties. Wow. OK, yeah. I keep saying this as well, don't I? Whenever I come down to visit the office, mm -hmm. I need somebody to take me on a little trip out to Sandbanks. We yeah. must organise that next the next week. time because <laughs> I do really want to see that. Shelley, thank you so much for coming on this episode of My Property pleasure. Particulars. Um, thanks for joining us and stay tuned for another episode of Property Particulars very soon.